Hello, welcome to Info Hub. Here is what you need to know for today, Friday, July 6, 2018. Bilateral talks between Ghana and Jamaica renew cooperation. Joint commission to be restored. Parliamentary Sectoral Committee updated on ExxonMobil's operations. A small business is offering an appealing service. And we're going to tell you about a floral project that is blooming in Sofia. The details of these stories and more right now. After being dormant for some time, President David Granger today said the Guyana-Jamaica Joint Commission will be reactivated and will form the platform for areas of cooperation between the two countries and the rest of the Caribbean. Details from Alexis Rodney. The head of state gave the update on the sidelines of the 39th regular meeting of the Conference of CARICOM Heads in Jamaica. It followed his meeting with Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness. According to President Granger, the fruitful meeting with Jamaica has opened avenues for development between the two countries and the rest of the Caribbean. Coming out of the Golden Report, uh, there is a new energy um, in Caribbean relations and um, we're looking at the uh, perpetuation, not the termination, the perpetuation of uh, Caribbean relations. Uh, and um, we have accepted that we need to pay interest to things like food security. And Guyana has the land space. According to the head of state, the Caribbean can come together to provide food security for all. The meeting also discussed Guyana's emerging oil and gas sector and the economic prospects it will have on the Caribbean. The leaders also examined the public security threats of trafficking in persons, terrorism and money laundering. Following that meeting, Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich signed two agreements with Chile's Undersecretary of Foreign Affairs Alfonso Silva. One is for the teaching of Spanish in Guyana and the other an agreement for enhanced cooperation in the energy and natural resources sector. We have been working on areas of cooperation such as uh, the teaching of languages. Chilean professors have come down to Georgetown and have been uh, working with the Foreign Service Institute to um, enhance the language capacity, Spanish in Spanish, of uh, public servants, including uh, uh, officers within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The parties also discussed the possibilities of Guyana taking advantage of Chile's vast experience in the mining sector. Guyana will engage in more bilateral talks before the end of the conference. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. ExxonMobil has made stellar progress in building local capacity in oil and gas. Country manager Rod Henson told the Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Natural Resources. Tiffany Rodias tells us more. ExxonMobil country manager Rod Henson updated the committee on the developments made to date in the lease of field. Most of the discussion focused on local content. Henson said more than 50% of the company's workforce is Guyanese. He added the company has invested a total of U.S. $21 million in 227 local companies for the first quarter of the year. I'm very happy with we are, where we are today. I recognize the importance of it and the interest in it. I can assure you that we and our contractors uh, work on this every single day. We are not where we're going to be. Uh, those numbers are going to continue to improve over time, uh, but again, quite happy with where we are today. Henson repeatedly assured the committee that the company remains apolitical in its business dealings. ExxonMobil is not involved with politics in Guyana. We don't choose sides. We're apolitical. That we're not funding any political party, any political side, any political initiatives. ExxonMobil is expected to begin all production in the early half of 2020. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. In this report, we spoke to several oil and gas workers who shared their views about the sector. Earl Wilson works as a deckhand on one of the supply vessels. The 49-year-old New Amsterdam Barbitian has been employed since last May. The experience is a good one for the offshore because um, it allowed me to really um, experience different things when it comes to rigging and all these things because the training that I received from EDO, it prepares me to face all these challenges, you know, being offshore. 27-year-old Clifton Hamilton has worked his way up from painter to roustabout on the Stena Karen. He has dreams of becoming an offshore installation manager. It's a, it's a really, really huge environment that I'm accustomed to. It's very, very challenging, but it's all right. But moving from 
painter to rouse about. It is motivating for my career. Elliot English also works on the Stena drill rig as an administrator. He says there is scope for growth working in the industry. For me personally, it's, 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 it's uplifting, whereas I can have a new experience in a different way. There's opportunity for everyone, even if you're a waiter, even if, I'm talking about land, even if you're a waiter on the land, even if you have technical skills on land, even if you don't have any technical skills, there's opportunity available for you offshore. 52-year-old chef Wayne Williams is no stranger to working on vessels. It's been, it's been wonderful because of past, over the past years, I've just the work I've been doing. But I used to work with, on oil tankers, but now with EDO, it's a new experience and it's, you know, it's, it's far better. If you are interested in working offshore, you can visit EDO's website at eldoradooffshore.com to access available vacancies. For Info Hub, Tiffany Rogers. The Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, is actively pursuing membership of the Egmont Group of Financial Intelligence Units as it continues to build its capacity to tackle anti-money laundering and terrorist financing. More in this Stacey Carmichael report. Head of the Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, Matthew Langevine, said Guyana's membership of the Egmont Group of FIUs will assist in the fight against money laundering, terrorist financing, and proliferation financing. He was speaking at a recently hosted Money Laundering National Risk Assessment Seminar. That will change the landscape for cooperation, for intelligence sharing, because a lot of activity, what we know and what we see, involves a lot of movement for currency um, and funds across national borders. And so it is very important that we become a member of the Eggman Group. Application for membership was first made in 2014 under the previous PPP government, but was not supported. Langevine explained this was as a result of our blacklisted status with the Financial Action Task Force and the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. After exiting the third round of mutual evaluation in 2016, under the stewardship of Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams, the application was reactivated. We were challenged to... Um, identify sponsors for, from within the region. We've had many engagements with the Egmont organization, including the regional representative who's from Canada. And um, we've, we've gotten a lot of favorable feedback. In fact, in, during the November plenary, which was CFATF plenary, which was held in Guyana, the Egmont representative that was here, along with the regional rep from, from Canada, visited the FIU and they were very impressed with our setup, our structure, our systems, our staff. Uh, they did a full walkthrough and they were satisfied that Guyana had what it takes to become a member. Langevin is optimistic that with the intervention of the CFATF chair, A.G. Williams and other countries, Guyana will secure membership of the Egmont Group. The Egmont Group of Financial Intelligence Units, headquartered in Canada, was created to provide FIUs around the world a forum to exchange information confidentially to combat money laundering, the financing of terrorism and other predicate offences. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Thanks for staying with us. Women in Cummings Park Sapphire are seizing the opportunity to empower themselves with the establishment of a $3 million Green Life floral project. Sinika Thorne brings us that story. The greenhouse project produces croton and other indoor and outdoor plants, vegetables and fruits that are sold to the Sapphire residents and businesses. The venture, officially launched on July 5, is being led by members of the Green Life for Cooperative Society Limited. The group originated out of First Lady Sandra Granger's success in business and self-reliance workshop. A special thrill when, after one of my workshops, I see things happening. And it is great that things are happening in Sophia. Women are seizing the opportunity to educate and empower themselves and move into financial independence. The First Lady encouraged the women to capitalize on the National School Feeding and Other Program to market their produce. Group President Rohilda Glasgow explained the venture is in keeping with the country's green state agenda. 
It also aims to teach women, especially the single parents, how to grow their own food and become self-sufficient. We're hoping uh, we'll teach the, some of the single parents, you know, to grow their own garden, their own kitchen gardens. They can grow so much stuff that they can even sell, right, which will bring an additional income for them. Right? We're also trying to uh, teach them to use the fruits, the local fruits, to make things like fruit juice for the children. They can also bag it up and sell juice, icicles, right? because it is very good, you know, the um, natural fruit juice. The group will be expanding its training program to include catering, arts and craft, sewing and cosmetology, particularly targeted at young people. Councillor Andrea Marx, instrumental in the project's establishment, said an office will be established where persons can make their purchases. This venture has been funded under the government's Sustainable Livelihood and Entrepreneur Development Program. The group is one of 20 groups across the country that benefited from funding. Sinica Thorne, InfoHub. After 10 years in the cosmetology industry, owner of Urban Oasis Beauty Salon and Cosmetology School in Georgetown, Janelle Blackman Jones, has expanded her business with the launch of a new spa and skincare services. Crystal Stahl tells us more. Blackman Jones offers services such as microdermabrasion, tailored facials, chemical peels, waxing, acrylic, and nail designs, among others. Internationally certified from the Britain Institute in Canada and with few salons offering the service, Blackman Jones sheds light on the microdermabrasion service. Microdermabrasion, right, it's not for persons who have active acne, right? So you have acne and you, it's, uh, you have pus and, and so on, it's painful. Microdermabrasion is not necessarily for you. It's after you would have treated the acne and you want to get rid of the scars, you want to get rid of that post-inflammatory um, hyperpigmentation or you have um, photo-aging or um, hyperpigmentation due to sun exposure or, or so forth. You have uh, thick textured skin, it's, un it's uneven, large pores, those are the things that microdermabrasion is good for. She explained the new business venture initially stemmed from her dealing with acne and other skin issues for decades and her drive to solve those issues and help others. Guyanese people, we, I don't think we take enough care of our skin. First of all, we need to be educated with our skin. I th people are still washing their face with soap. And soap changes the pH balance of your skin. It dries out your skin. And especially for persons who have acne, that's a definite no-no. Persons are required to do an initial consultation with the cosmetologist before proceeding to the skin care treatment. Treatment also includes follow-up methods, which our business offers through skin care products for retail. The business is located on South Road, Georgetown. Blackman Jones can be contacted on her Facebook business page or on her mobiles 691-1512 or 231-2058. Reporting for InfoHub, Crystal Stahl. As government moves to implement the ban on single-use plastics, several agencies are working to raise awareness on the harmful effects and what citizens can do to protect the environment. Stacey Carmichael joins us again with our final report for today. Large amounts of plastic are choking our drains, trenches and piling up on land is not only unsightly but harmful. Plastic pollution is very real and single-use plastics are small but have a large impact. These include plastic water bottles, cups, straws, food containers, black and colored bags and other utensils. Many end up in our waterways, drains and public spaces as a result of dumping. Guyana, a leader in biodiversity conservation and environmental management, has taken steps to reduce the use of plastics and the environmental impacts. A nationwide consultative process has been launched. This will see the hosting of national conversations to raise awareness on the dangers prior to the implementation of a ban on single-use plastics. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, is playing a critical role in sensitizing persons on the effects of single-use plastics. Executive Director Acting of the EPA, Kemraj Parstram, during the first of these national conversations, said each person has a critical role to play to ensure the successful phasing out of single-use plastics locally. We as a regulator, I mean, we have our views. We have to, our, our main mandate is to conserve and protect our environment and human health. 
Um, we have an education and awareness program that works towards sensitizing the public and their, and their responsibility. Each of us has, has our own in, our responsibility to, to deal with the environment and to ensure it is protected. Even when single-use plastics are sent to the landfill, they are still harmful. The best way to curb single-use plastic pollution is to reduce personal plastic consumption. Choose biodegradable bags and other reusable items. Help save the environment. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Here now are your bridge and weather reports. We leave you with the latest World Cup football updates. Goodbye.